Good morning to you. This is Brad Zonkel. I'm in my classroom and this is the first day that the students come back after the uh, holiday. Yesterday was a teacher in service day and so today uh, all of my young scholars come back to the room as I cast pearls of wisdom on them and they will become much richer, you know, and everything. Well, we're going to have a great time. So, hey, look, I'm going to show you something here. This was given to me uh, about I think about a year ago, and I can't really tell you who had given this to me. And they said, I think you'll find this book interesting. This is actually a book about the Holy Family in Egypt. Now, if you remember in the story, it says that Joseph took Mary and the baby Jesus, and they headed to Egypt. And when they went down there, we have that statement, and then they left after they heard that Herod had died. That's all it says in the scripture. There have been whole ministries, books, theories, writings about where they went and what they did all the way through. It's kind of like, well, since they went down there, it's most likely they went through this route and then they went this way and they must have stopped here and then, and so they uh, would have spent time here and here. And here's the thing. <clears throat> There's nothing in the Bible that tells you about this. All right. This is all theory, tradition, man-made thinking, and putting this together. And there's a very, very important point as I, as I show this to you uh, today. We're in Mark chapter 10. And in Mark chapter 10... Uh, the, the passage that I want you to follow, it talks about Jesus being approached by a man. He was rich, he was young, and he was a ruler. All three very, very powerful, uh, I guess, traits to have at that time. And he goes to Jesus and he says, well, I want to know, I, you know, I think I've got everything in line. I want to know how I get eternal life. That's really the only thing that I'm missing. Jesus says, well, keep the commandments. And what Jesus does, read the passage, Jesus gives him the list of the latter half of the Ten Commandments found in Exodus 20. Do not murder, uh, no adultery, and things like this. And then this young man says, well, okay, I've got those covered ever since I've been young. Jesus then refers to the first half of the Ten Commandments. And he says, well, then what you have to do is tell me who's in charge of your life. Sell everything you have and then follow me. Well, the rich young man realizes he can't uh, handle that because his kingdom is on earth. His God is what's in his storehouse. And he walks away, and the Bible says, because he had many possessions. Now, along the line of this coming up with people taking one small thing and building traditions, that's kind of the way that the religious thought of the day was. It was real important for um, people to understand what is important at that time was if you have good health, God is happy with you. Now, that guy over there that's sick, God's teaching him a lesson. You saw this in the book of Job, Job's friends. If you have wealth, they taught, then God's happy with you. Now, those guys over there that are scrapping by and their farm's not doing good, God's teach them a lesson. They deserve it. You saw that teaching also in the book of Job uh, along that line, which uh, his friends were also under that belief. And so the talk was prosperity is a sign of God's pleasure. And so really, you know, and, and this was even the disciples were under this because when Jesus tells them, listen, it is impossible for a rich man under the guidelines that he has set to get into the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples, having been taught this all their life, are openly shocked and they, well, who can be saved? And then Jesus starts teaching them. If it goes by man's efforts, it's going to be impossible. However, with God, nothing is impossible. So scholars who are the disciples, he is telling them, then the reliance upon the one who has made this kingdom, the reliance is upon the one who made salvation possible. You put your faith in there, and you look for the kingdom to come. 
not your own kingdom which you have created. Now, I've been in the domain of many, many rich people. I mean, multimillionaires, either by visiting or in past when I was in publishing, doing some work with them. And you will see at their households, very, very rich. They, uh, they're little kingdoms. Everything that they want is really there. And then when I would go to talk with them about eternal, uh, their eternal state, uh, where they're going to go when they die, it was, not, it was beyond an indifference. It's kind of like... Uh, what would I need to look for? I have everything I want here. So Mark chapter 10, uh, the truth came out to me as I saw that. The reason I want to bring this to you is a lot of my friends that are uh, watching uh, these videos, you're really hurting financially. You know, when the bills come in, you get a little knot in your stomach and you want to make sure you pay your utilities or there's an unexpected injury which uh, takes you to the emergency room and there's something else that comes out of your, your paycheck. And you are working, God bless you, you're working as hard as you can, but it's just that you almost go paycheck to paycheck. There's barely enough to, uh, to put into the savings account, let alone the checking account, and then who even knows how we're gonna be able to get outside of scholarships, get my kid to college. You know, you're just trying and you get frustrated. And then there's a lot of thinking, well, maybe God's just, you know, he's trying to really kind of push me, test me, teach me a lesson, punish me. Friends, one of the things why you and I face financial uh, uh, pathways that sometimes can be hard is because our reliance comes down to God taking care of us. And then we also realize the end result is not here on earth. Uh, we have a kingdom and untold riches in heaven to come. We, have, we are not our own savior. We have Jesus as savior. We cannot do everything. Jesus can. We cannot bring the blessings to all mankind. God can. Uh, we cannot rely upon what's sitting over in the bank. We rely upon God. Now, we're faithful, and we are paying our bills. We are taking care of things. But sometimes I'll see Christians that just get frustrated. If I could just have a little bit more money, or uh, I just don't understand why I'm not rich. Where's your mindset? Where's your mindset, Christian? All right? Isn't it good that we have a dependence? Isn't it good that we have a reliance upon God that we allow Jesus to take us through and help give us decisions on when money blessings come in, where we send them, how we share, we take care of other believers and others that are in need, and there's so much more to say. But I want you to take a look at this today because let's not get under the false teaching that, well, you know, we can kind of come up with ideas that, you know, money equals God's happiness Health, perfect health, means only that God is happy with us. And, uh, you know, all of these different things that have been man-made traditions through the years. Let's look once again to the Lord Jesus Christ, and let's put our dependence on him. And isn't that what he wants? Isn't that all through the scripture anyway? Many more things I could say. I'm going to get ready. I've got some students coming in here uh, this morning, and I am charged up. Had a good, restful time during the uh, Christmas vacation, and the Lord really spoke to me and gave me a lot of uh, joy and helped me out. And, and, and I hope he does with you, too. And again, I'm going to ask you, if, if, I'm trying not to be selfish, but if you know that these minist this ministry, this video ministry, can help one person, would you do me the favor and share it? Just let them know, hey, maybe there's something here from this old, uh, you know, bespeckled teacher sitting in a classroom. And maybe there's something here that God has brought him that can help you out. And if you might share that, listen, I really, really appreciate it. Too. And I appreciate you uh, listening and coming on board with me today. Got to go. I got to run. Uh, this is Brad Zockel, and I am getting ready here in uh, Knoxville, Tennessee, USA, at Grace Christian Academy in good old room 129. We got a big day coming. I'm gonna start teaching today again. Thanks so much, God bless you. Lord willing, we'll talk again tomorrow.